Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel, Mishak's Custom Baits, Rick Mishak here. Uh, we skipped a week on the videos, uh, following my issues, he's, uh, he's not coming home. He's, uh, we've, we've got him in a nursing home. Um, he's, uh, they put him in a rehab center for a little while, trying to, uh, trying to help him get stronger, it didn't work. Um, so he, he can't get out of bed by himself anymore, he's having difficulty even, even raising his arms. Um, he has dementia, and uh, <clears throat> the nursing home, uh, one of the nurses in the nursing home the other day said, said he was having a pretty bad day. He wouldn't eat, he, wouldn't, he didn't want to do anything, he didn't remember anybody, um, and they just said he's, he's having a bad day, and, and he has some. So. Uh, but uh, the, the sad thing is that, is that he can't really feed himself anymore either. He can't, he can, he's so weak he can, he can barely lift his arms at all. So. Uh, so it's a good thing that uh, even though my mother-in-law was insisting that she could take care of him, I mean, for, for crying out loud, she's 74 years old, she can't lift this guy up, she can't help him get out of bed, you know. <laughs> I don't know what she was thinking, but, but, uh, but we finally convinced her, and well, I think it was mostly the doctors that convinced her, that he needed care that she couldn't provide anymore. So we've been dealing with that, and, uh, and I just chose to, to do just this video here just to um, um, just inst instead of making another one to to make it for last week I'm just going to pick up here um, and we'll, we'll schedule this one for, for a release at you know, what's like like 4:30 ish or when they when they release um, uh, I would do that on Wednesday be, we'll just get back on track that way um, If you guys know anybody that wants to buy a 72 Ford F100, uh, it's a Ranger XLT. It's in a little bit of rough shape, but let me know. All right, that was his truck. He, he bought it brand new in 72, and uh, it has just under 60,000 miles on it. Original motor, I've never been overhauled. Um, needs, a, needs a battery so you can get it started. And uh, the guy who was, the mechanic who was doing work on the truck, well, he fiddled around, fiddled around with the carburetor, just needs a new carburetor. How's that? <laughs> um, but other than that, it runs. Um, has three out of four of the original hubcaps. I, for, I think it was the post office that somehow smashed one of his hubcaps and he never replaced it. But uh, but anyways, she doesn't really, my mother-in-law doesn't really want to sell that yet either until he's gone um, because she thinks he might get to come home for a visit and then he won't see his, he, and he won't see his truck. He's not coming home for a visit. Okay. She's out there paddling around on the River Denial. Okay. Yes, that's kind of sad too. But you know what? It is what it is. You know, we, we all deal with the, the cycle of life in our own way. And uh, <laughs> that, okay, all that said, um, let's go ahead and get started today. What are we going to do today? Well, today I'm going to make a, um, I'm going to make a imitation of it for a shell cracker. Okay. And we're going to use, again, we're going to use glitter to to represent some of the other, some of the colors in the shell cracker. Um, I'm gonna use, uh, for colorants, I'm gonna use Waterworks Watermelon 109, or 101, excuse me. Um, and then just a, a drop or two of black to darken just a little bit. I think this is, I think this, this watermelon is gonna be just a little bit too green, pardon me. It's a little bit too green. Um, and, uh, and then we'll use, I'll use, uh, I'll use some black glitter for the, there's a, there, almost every fish has some black in it. But there's some black spots along the back and whatnot. Um, uh, we'll use orange to to represent the the orange belly color when they're when they're in spawning colors. Um, we'll use uh, I'll use this red glitter because not much, just a little bit of the red glitter because another name for the shell cracker is a red ear sunfish, and it's because they have that little strip of red on the black ear flap. Okay. Um, and then, of course, we're going to use the black here. Um, there's some blue in them too, and we're going to we're, we're, so we'll throw in a little, little bit of blue glitter too. So we're going to have four different colors of glitter in this bait, and uh, I haven't quite decided yet which molds we're going to use. I'll do that while the while the plastic cell is cooking, and we'll uh, we'll show you I'll show you what we're going to uh, which molds we're going to be using here in just a few minutes, right? All right. Here we are, we're ready to go. Okay, glass cells nice and hot. There's a couple air bubbles on the top, but that'll be okay. Um, 
I'm going to shoot the uh, the fluke mold or uh, our our jerk bait. That's basically a super fluke um, knockoff. Uh, I'm going to shoot the the or my Kai Tech uh, swim bait knockoff, and then also that was from Lurecraft. Um, and then I'm also going to shoot the bait junkies Ned rig. Um, and I'll put all those links in the in the in the description so you guys that that um, that like those baits can go know exactly where to go get what what I used. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get started doing this. I'm just going to squirt some in. I'm not going to count drops this time. I'm just going to squirt that in. See how that works. So that's. You can see the fumes coming off of that. As I stir it and mix it, it's a good thing they're all going right to the fan, huh? Or Mr. Rick might have to put on his uh, put on his respirator. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna put just a little bit more of this green pumpkin in. I'm oh, green pumpkin. This watermelon in. Uh, I use so much green pumpkin. I sometimes I, I say that about the about the uh, about the watermelon too. All right, let's see. Oh, there we go. That's looking, that's looking a little thicker. All right, there we go. Fantastic. I think that's. Yep, there we go. That's looking pretty darn tasty. Well, for the fish. Okay, I'm just gonna put in. I'm gonna put in two drops of black because black is the most powerful and dangerous color that you can use here. You don't want to use too much because you can't take it out. You have to start all over if you get too much. So you just start with just a little bit and work your way up until you know exactly what you want your recipe to be. Oh, there we go. There we go. We can see that's a little bit darker than it was before. That's nice. I think that's exactly what the, uh, the effect I'm looking for. Oh, guess what I forgot to do again. I forgot to grab the... measuring spoons. All right, so I'm going to use the medium black and I'm going to use, um, since it's not a huge color for that uh, in there, I'm just going to go with a dash, eighth of a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. Just going to put that in. I don't want a ton of the black. I want more blue than I do the black. There we go. Some of these lids, I get them on pretty tight, and then they don't want to come off. Okay. So I'm going to really use a full quarter teaspoon, a full scoop of that. Okay. I'm going to use just a little tiny bit of the red. We're going to go with a pinch, which is a sixteenth of a teaspoon of the red. The medium red here, okay? Because there's not much red in these in these fish, in the color wise. So, and basically it's just on that, it's just on that ear flap. Well, it looks like an ear flap. It's not really an ear. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this here off. All right. Now, but the orange, I'm gonna use more of the orange because I'm going for the for the spawning colors. So that orange belly. There's a lot there, all right? So I'm just, I'm gonna kind of heap this quarter teaspoon. The large red, okay. Let's go ahead and mix that stuff in. And then we'll see if we have, what colors we have. I'm gonna have to heat this again. Get some of that stuff coming off the sides. It's already kind of solidified a little bit. Okay. But that said, I can see a couple lumps in there. I think that these are gonna look pretty freaking awesome once we shoot them in the once we shoot that stuff in the mold. Alright, let's go let me go ahead and heat that up again. I'll move the camera again and then we'll take our shot. Alright. Plastisol is right at 320 degrees. 
So we're about ready to do. So we're ready to do this. I should say we're about ready to. We are. Let's go ahead and start shooting some shooting some baits here. It goes the flukes. It's full. Hold a little bit of pressure. You don't want to like lean into it, but just hold a little pressure. It helps ensure that the that the, that the all the cavities are full. All the air pressure, all the air has been pushed out of it. There we go. Here's the uh, the Ned rigs. Yes, that's that's done. Let's go and chop off the screw. All right, now I'll start doing these swim baits one at a time. Now we really want to make sure we hold that pressure here to make sure that the that the swim foot gets filled out properly. Make sure it gets all the air pushed out. That's really the only thing that with with these with this style of swim bait you really have to watch out for. Is make sure you hold your pressure so you can feel that so you get that cavity filled all the way. There's a lot of cavities in this particular mold. It's, it's uh, you have to do each one separately. And that's okay. Oh, that one's full or done. I mean, that's uh, hmm. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough here. To, uh, to finish that last cavity, we'll find out here. All right, let's. I'm blowing the uh, the fumes away from my face. I don't want to. I don't want to snort that stuff. <laughs> That's bad news. Okay, that one's full. With the pressure. All right. Now I don't know if that fifth one filled properly or not. <clears throat> yeah, that, we just barely had, just barely had enough plastic to shoot all these, shoot all these molds. All right. We need to wait just a minute for these to, for these to uh, cool off, and then we'll uh, go ahead and open up the molds. All right. I think the molds are ready to open up. So let's uh, let's go and start with the. Flukes. Oh, look, they all, what happened to them? Oh, that's right, they're all stuck to the other side. <laughs> Let's go and pull these out. Take a look and see what, set that down, all right. Oh, there we go. I think that this, is going to be a pretty good sample for any any shell cracker sunfish, red ear sunfish, whatever, whatnot. Okay, I think that's going to be a I think that's going to be a pretty good representation. And uh, yeah, all right, let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, wait, that was I just opened that one up, dummy. Don't don't do that. Yeah, I shouldn't do. I shouldn't call myself dummy. Come on do silly stuff and I don't do that nearly as much as I used to um, but it still happens obviously here's the uh, here's the Ned rigs those look fantastic okay absolutely fantastic yeah these are gonna be these are gonna be pretty good baits I think in any waters that have that have any shell cracker sunfish uh, here's these these uh these swim baits now oops and get that thing opened up all the way. There we go. Okay, and remember the cavity I said I didn't know if it filled out all the way? Uh, what do you guys think? Think it filled out? <laughs> yeah, so we end up with five out of this shot, it looks like. Well, that foot, yeah, see that foot there didn't fill out quite right all the way, quite right all the way either. So it's, uh, so that one's, we'll throw that one back. So we got four. Um, there just wasn't enough plastic all left to, to make this happen. Um, this one looks good. Take that off the sprue. Take the sprue off that one, and that one, and that one. Okay, it looks like, so it looks like you got four good ones out of that, out of the, uh, four out of the six. Um, but it's not the fault of the mold, it's the fault of the operator because I didn't make sure I had enough, enough plastic off for, the, for this mold too. So, oops, sorry about that, hit the, hit the camera there. Um, but yeah, there we go. I think that's, uh, I think we can say Bob's your uncle on that, all right?
All right, there we go. Okay, so today we got we got to make you got to see us make a see me make a new color for myself um, for places to go fishing. And this and this is one of the coolest things I think about making your own baits is that when you when you're going to go someplace and you can and you know that that the that there's certain types of bait fish um, or forage fish in the in the body of water you're going to be fishing at. And if you, if, you, if if say Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's, whatever, where, wherever you go, wherever you normally shop, don't have an example that, that matches those that, that that forage, just make your own. You know, it's just a, it's as simple as what we did today. Just go look at a picture on Google of of the, of the forage fish, find one that matches um, your, your body of water. Um, and then and then make something that represents it. It's one of the coolest things about doing this. I think is that you can do you can do that. You you can you can customize everything to your fishing. And uh, um, in the future, in this segment here, with this part of the of the uh, of the video, we're gonna we're gonna answer any questions. We're gonna, we'll, we'll pick questions, whatnot, um, and answer them here in this in this part. Um, uh, so go ahead and ask questions down below. Post your questions. I'll write them down, um, and we'll, and I'll answer them here on in my videos. Uh, so with that said, if you like what you saw, go ahead hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell, smack it. Well, not really smack it, you know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so you get notifications when I, when we get a new video. Um, and until next time, tight lines and calm waters. <laughs>